You ever bought a product that you had to assemble yourself, like this workbench, for example? And then that smile creeps on your face because it says all hardware included on the packaging. Yes. And then you finally get to that last piece you have to assemble. And, and guess what? It's missing one screw. So you search high and low for it. Because maybe, maybe you dropped it somewhere. Well, you did say high, right? So maybe, maybe you left it in the ceiling uh, panels. Maybe you left it in the ceiling, ceiling panels when you were, uh, you know, in the ceiling. You never know, right? Well, maybe you dropped it in the sofa cushions. Uh, maybe, uh, not there. Uh, not under there either. Uh, well, maybe you dropped it in the can. The garbage can. Uh, yeah, don't see it in there either. It's behind the TV. Hmm. No, not there either. Well, it wouldn't hurt to look in here, right? Because you, you did use the bathroom about 10 minutes ago, so let's. Let's see if it's in there. I'll find the key. Let's see. All right. That's it. Maybe it's in here. Okay. Not in there. Uh, maybe you dropped it in here. You know, sometimes that can happen, you know. There. Uh, over here. Uh, well, did you use this one or the other one? No, well, maybe, maybe use this one. I forgot. Uh, no, no, did you use. Oh, somebody in there? Oh, sorry. Okay. I think you used this one. It's not there either. <sighs> maybe I left it in the car. Let's see. I hate when this happens. <sighs> Not there. could end up anywhere. Oh well. Well, could it have somehow bounced into the bushes over here? You know, you gotta be thorough when you're looking for stuff sometimes. They end up in the weirdest places. Okay guys, I don't know what to say about that screw. I guess it had better things to do with its time than to stick around me, so. I guess the joke's on me, I'm the one that got screwed. Okay, so it looks like I'm gonna have to take one of the screws that I do have, size it, and uh, get one just like it at the store somewhere. So, today we're gonna talk about screws and how to size them. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button and I'll see you after the intro. Now you got all types of screws out there. You got wood screws. You got sheet metal screws. You got machine screws. You got hex headed self drilling screws. You got pan headed self drilling screws. 
They got leg screws. Not to mention heavy duty carriage bolts like this one or drywall screws. Screws, screws, screws. Now, what makes the screw self-drilling is the tip of the screw. On the left, we have the self-drilling screw and on the right, we have a drill bit. And if you notice, the tips are pretty similar. Now, that allows the screw to act like a drill bit when you first enter the surface with your screw. Because many times you have to tap the surface with a drill bit first before you put uh, a screw in. Well, with the self-drilling screw, uh, it's all in one. It's part drill bit and part screw. Now, leg screws are some of the most strongest fasteners in the fastener world. Uh, they're used to connect uh, steel beams, uh, lumber, very, very heavy loads. And as you can see, compared to a uh, regular machine screw or a regular wood screw, you can see the size difference in uh, what they're probably used for, not the regular applications. Now, screw heads can either be flat, like this one on the left, or rounded, like this one on the right. Uh, the round-headed screw can also be called a pan-headed screw. Now, flat-headed screws like this one right here are also commonly called countersunk screws. And this means that the head of the screw will remain flush with uh, whatever surface that it's screwed into. For example, when we look at the screws on this door hinge right here, we see that the screw heads are flush with the uh, surface of the door, as well as the door hinge. Those are countersunk screws. If you turn this way, you don't see any protrusion of a screw head from the surface. Now, it would be worth mentioning that the mate to a countersunk screw would be a countersunk hole. And I drew a cross section of how that hole would look uh, to receive the countersunk screw. And it's shaped like a cone to match the head of a countersunk screw. So when you finally get the screw head to reach the surface of the cone shaped hole, the screw head will be flush to whatever surface that you're screwing into, as you can see there. And that's the purpose of the countersink hole. Now, sometimes in the tool world, you get uh, some mating going on there. So you have uh, the round headed screw mating with the flat headed screw and you get a countersunk screw with the round head. And that's this machine screw right here. Okay, so we've covered some of the most common screws out there. But believe me, there's a lot more specialty types, and you can find those in the fastener aisle at your local hardware store. Matter of fact, let's head over there right now. And if you go to any hardware store, they got entire aisles dedicated to the fastener category. Now here you have a device specifically designed to help you measure the size of your screws. You can measure it in standard sizes or imperial sizes, or you can measure them in the metric size. Now you simply take your screw and insert it in whatever hole you think it belongs to. And when the screw catches, you're in business.
Now you might want to get familiar with certain terms of the trade when it comes to sizing your screws. So let's use this lag screw for example, because its size will help to explain what I'm talking about. Number one, diameter, and that's simply the distance from one end of the shaft to the other end. And it's usually represented by a one or two digit number. And the larger that number, the larger the screw. When looking at your packaging, it's usually preceded by a number symbol and it's the first number to appear. Number two, threads per inch. And that's a complete number of threads per inch. Now that second number, 32, is the threads per inch. Times one and a half inches, which is the length of the screw or fastener. Number three, thread per inch. And not to be confused with threads per inch with an S. Thread per inch is simply the distance between one thread and another thread. It's commonly called the pitch of a screw or fastener. Well, after learning so much about screws, as I know you guys have, getting screwed wasn't so bad after all, right? So that's pretty much the basics of screws and how to size them. So if you learned something today, you got something to add, leave a comment and hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you guys in the next video.